Would you be surprised to find out that 9 out of 10 professing Christians are actually not true Christians? Hello, my name is Trey Talley. I'm the pastor of the church at Pecan Creek located in Denton, Texas. This is what one of my favorite theologians said back in his time, in his era, in the early 1900s, that he estimated that 9 out of 10 people who profess to be Christians are actually not true believers. And I would ask the same question for of us today. Um, what about us today? What makes a true Christian? Do we just say the word Christian and that makes us a Christian? Uh, can you be born in a family of Christians and that makes you a Christian? Is it a matter of going to church or walking into a building with the word church on it that makes you a Christian? And if you asked uh, 10 people who are professing to be Christians today, what makes them a Christian, odds are you would get lots of those types of answers. Or they might say something like they walked an aisle at a young age, or they raised their hand, or they said a specific prayer uh, when they were a young age, and that made them a Christian. But what we find out is that biblically, there is information that must be believed in. And this is what we refer to as the gospel. It literally is the good news. Is what that means. First, um, a Roman, sorry, chapter 1, verse 16 says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God unto salvation for everyone who believes. And there Paul lays it out. The, the gospel is the power of God for everyone who believes, and it brings salvation. And, but the gospel is not just a word, G-O-S-P-E-L, but there is a message that goes with that. And that gospel is all about the person and the work of Jesus Christ. Now, oftentimes today, you will ask someone, or I will ask someone, if they are a Christian, and they will say yes, and if they do so, I immediately have them explain that answer to me. Well, what, what defines a Christian, or what makes you a Christian? And very rarely do you hear what Paul is emphasizing here in Romans chapter 1, uh, there at the beginning, and there in verse 16, that there is a content, there is information, there is a message from God that, that Paul has received that he is giving out to others, how are they to be saved? They are to believe in that message that we get that he is proclaiming and that we are to proclaim as well. Now, people today often distort the gospel and they often feel liberty, especially professing Christians, to change the gospel in whatever message they feel uh, like it should be. I remember speaking to a large group not too long ago, not even that large, uh, several people in the room, but as I was talking to them, I asked them, you know, what is the gospel? And we went around the room, probably 10 or 15 different college age people there, and they each gave diametrically different answers to what is the gospel that had to be believed in for salvation. One of them made it about good living. One of them spoke about having to go through an early divorce and, and how God got him through that, and that was the good news. That was the gospel. Another one said it was the whole Bible. But what is the gospel that must be believed in for salvation? It is all about Jesus Christ. It is all about Him, uh, the eternal Son of God, putting on flesh, uh, dwelling among us, living a righteous, sinless life, uh, living that life that we could not live, dying on the cross for that substitutionary atonement where He pays the sins, pays the price, takes the wrath, takes the hell of all who will believe in the gospel, the good news of Him then He gives us His righteousness so that when we die, we have eternal life. And that is good news, that God Himself has provided the payment for our sin. Now, we have to be very careful as we present the gospel not to allow it to be distorted. In fact, Paul warns greatly about that. Galatians chapter 1, see, I believe I've turned there. Chapter 1, verse 6. Listen to what he says. I'll read through verse 8 or 9. I am astonished that you are so quickly deserting him who called you in the grace of Christ and are turning to a different gospel, not that there is another one, but there are some who trouble you and want to distort the gospel of Christ. But even if we or an angel from heaven should preach to you a gospel contrary to the one we preach to you, let him be accursed. As we have said before, so now I say again, if anyone is preaching to you a gospel contrary to the one we re you received, let him be accursed. Dire warnings there from Paul. Why is it so important to present the Bible and present the gospel clearly? Because it is the message of God 
for the, which contains the power of God for salvation. God uses the gospel to draw people to himself for salvation. So whether you're listening now and you're a professing Christian or not, uh, I would challenge you to think, what makes you a Christian? Uh, is it lifestyle? Is it going to a particular building? Or is it the gospel that you have believed in that God has opened your eyes to see? He's opened your ears to hear. He's opened your heart to receive the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, living and dying and rising from the dead and paying the price for your sins. Focus on that gospel. Focus on the good news. And if you are a professing Christian and you are a true believer who you have been saved by grace through faith, in Jesus Christ. Praise God and let others know the true gospel message. Have a great day.